bilirubin metabolism. So in order to form bilirubin, bilirubin is a component which is formed by the breaking down of hemoglobin. So where does hemoglobin come from? Hemoglobin is usually found in red blood cells. Red blood cells usually have a half-life or what's known as um, a life cycle of around 120 days, which is why I've got the RBC 120 days on the front of your screen now, just to always remember this in fact. So let's get into bilirubin metabolism. So you can have bilirubin, like I said, bilirubin is a component which is formed by the breaking down of hemoglobin. So in order to form bilirubin, you must have free hemoglobin. So somehow hemoglobin has to get out of red blood cells. So where exactly is hemoglobin or heme found within the body? So you can find or get hemoglobin by red cell destruction, so RBC hemolysis, or heme protein catabolism, which can take place within the liver, or bone marrow erythropoiesis. You know bone marrow is the start or the progenitor of red blood cells because kidneys usually produce a hormone called erythropoietin which goes onto the bone marrow and signals to cause a start of process known as erythropoiesis which is forming reticulocytes. Reticulocytes are immature red blood cells. Once they become mature they form red blood cells and red blood cells are carriers and oxygens and you know the rest. Now, senescent erythrocytes, so you can see on the screen on the right, senescent erythrocytes meaning the ones, red, red blood cells, which are about to die or inactive. Once they are broken down, they give off two components. One of the components is not highlighted on the screen. They give off heme and globin, hemoglobin. So heme and globin. Now globin is a amino acid molecule, so when it breaks down, it forms loads of various different amino acids, which I'm not going to go into in this video. These amino acids are then reuptaken into the bone marrow and can be used again to production of new red blood cells. Heme, on the other hand, can be broken down further into bilirubin, but first, before that, there is an intermediate step. Now, mononuclear phagocytic cells, also known as macrophages, found within the spleen, reticular endothelial system, or various different places within the body, such as liver, where they're known as Kupfer cells. These guys break down the hemoglobin into biliverdin first by an enzyme known as heme oxygenase. This then gets, biliverdin gets converted to bilirubin by biliverdin reductase, which is a second enzyme. This is a limiting factor enzyme. So you can see now, heme gets converted to biliverdin by heme oxygen and biliverdin further to bilirubin by biliverdin reductase. Now you have bilirubin in free serum, i.e. within your blood. So free bilirubin, you need to understand, cannot be, it's not lipid soluble, nor is it water soluble. So therefore, in order for it to transport throughout the blood, it needs to be, uh, it needs to attach to something. And the, what better way than attach to the most abundant protein found within your blood, known as albumin. So bilirubin forms a albumin complex. So now you have unconjugated bilirubin, albumin complex, unconjugated bilirubin, which we'll touch upon later, because some of you might wonder what is unconjugated bilirubin. For now, just know you have bilirubin and albumin complex. So, pause the video. Left is the small schematic overview of what I've gone through in this slide. So, once we get to the point where we have bilirubin albumin complex, this then gets transported into liver. So, you have unconjugated bilirubin plus albumin that gets then transported into the hepatic circulation and ends up in the hepatic sinusoid and the hepatocytes. Once inside the hepatocytes, the albumin gets removed and is then combined with something known as a Z protein or known as ligandin. Then the hepatocytes have an enzyme known as glucuronyl transferase or UDPGT. This then converts bilirubin into conjugated bilirubin. So conjugation process takes place here. So you can see here that biliverdin, bilirubin ligandin, because removing albumin and the ligandin comes, and then by the enzyme UDPGT or glucuronyl transferase for a simpler form, you have now conjugated bilirubin. Conjugated bilirubin now does not need albumin or any protein to travel through the blood because it is water soluble. So, recap just quickly: we have. But, uh, we, somehow we need to form bilirubin and bilirubin you know is coming from hemoglobin so this can be by catabolism of senescent or effective or dead red blood cells every 120 days from the reticular endothelial system or you can have ineffective erythropoiesis so in some sort of bone marrow suppression due to tumor or some sort of tissue heme protein or liver for cells breaking down hemoglobin so most of the 75% of the heme that is 
causes uh, bilirubin formation comes directly from red blood cells. So now you have biliverdin, bilirubin, serum, albumin, and then into the liver by ligandin. Albumin gets changed to ligandin, and then gluconotransferase, which is the important enzyme, does the conjugation part. What happens next? So once you have conjugated bilirubin, conjugated bilirubin is then travels down through the biliary system. So the liver then uh, takes out the bilirubin through and it, get, and it gets combined through the uh, biliary system in the bile duct, common bile duct, and then enters the um, small intestine uh, through the um, bladder of ampullae. So once it gets, uh, so we know up to now. So once we have conjugated bilirubin through the biliary system, it gets into the small intestine. So once you have conjugated bilirubin, there are bacteria present within the small intestine which break down the conjugated bilirubin into what's known as urobilinogen. Uh, urobilinogen, 10% and rest 85 to 90% is then converted. So 10% goes back through the hepatic portal system, back into the liver, and from the liver it's gone into the kidneys where it's excreted in the urine. So you have a more well detailed diagram here. So Let's start off with the point here. So you have conjugated bilirubin. It gets uh, taken into small intestine where it gets processed by bacterial proteases. Bacterial proteases convert this into urobilogen as well as stercobilinogen. Stercobilinogen is what gives or is excreted through feces, which gives it a brown color. Now, the rest of the urobilogen gets uh, converted back into by the hepatic portal system goes back into the kidney and from the kidney is excreted in the urine which gives the urine the specific yellowish color so the yellow color formed in the urine is because of urobilinogen so when you have increased urobilinogen or increased yellow colorish of the urine even though the urine is not so concentrated with proteins this is because of increased breaking down of red blood cells so what happens to the rest unconjugated bilirubin that's not broken, broken down by the bacteria? This then gets converted back through the enterohepatic circulation and then goes through the process again. So this is simply the metabolism of bilirubin. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe.